delighted to be joined by Stephen Beacon of the Belfast Telegraph, uh, Northern Ireland's number one newspaper and number one sports journalist is here with us. And uh, at the start of the season, you and I uh, had a bit of a chat about the Irish League. You thought it was the most open, you thought it would be the most exciting, and I have to say, at this early stage of the Irish League, you're 100% correct. It's fantastic, Logie, it really is. If you look at all the leagues around Europe, the Irish League, it may be part-time, but it's probably the most exciting right now. You have five teams separated by only two points, and then um, the league keeps changing hands at the top of the table week in, week out. At the moment, you have Portadown, Cliftonville, Linfield, Crusaders, and of course, Glenavon up there. And let's not forget about Ballymena United, who are sick. They've made a fantastic start as well. The, league, um, the Irish League is having a wonderful time at the moment, and long may it continue. I hope it stays as tight for the remainder of the campaign. For a wee bit of fun on a weekly basis with The Telegraph, I know you do Premier League predictions, I do it for McLean's as well. Uh, I'll do a plug here, like a 7 out of 10 at the weekend. The Premiership is easier to predict than the Irish League. It is, there's no question about that. For instance, who would have thought Glenavon, who have never won on the artificial surface at Seaview, would go to Crusaders on Saturday and win 4-1 Logie? That was the result of the season for me so far. A magnificent performance by Glenavon and it just shows how dangerous they are against the big teams because they've already won at Windsor Park, they've won at Seaview and um, I would say whenever they play the major teams, the teams that you think are going to be up there challenging, Glenavon can beat them week in, week out. It's Glenavon whenever they play against the smaller teams that they struggle <laughs> funny enough so if Gary Hamilton can sort that problem out I think Glenavon for the first time in living memory are realistic title challengers Glenavon to me are like the Spurs of, of English football oh don't so, say that please, I, I, please I'll tell you why Logie Spurs could be nine points clear with only two games to go in the Premier League title race and they would still find a way of losing it <laughs> that is Glenavon's history that is Glenavon's history in the Irish League they've, um, they've snatched defeat from the jaws of victory more times than their fans would care to remember but now I think there's a, a discipline an organisation at the back and then um, they've got some bl brilliant strikers going forward and of course they've got Gary Hamilton who to me is um, one of the best young managers around so um, for Glenavon I hope they continue to produce this sort of form. I'm going to talk about the top teams uh, in a moment but I want to go back you mentioned the fact you know we talked about maybe you know the smaller teams Whenever you go down there as well, you know, you had Warren Point at home to Institute, you know, a dirty old Friday evening, I thought Institute making a long journey, Warren Point to maybe get something out of that, I thought the Yann's Whips battling very hard to get something in Ballin the Matter. You know, and, and those those results sort of go on their head as well too. Oh, it's, it, very, it's, it's, it's very tight at the bottom too. Oh, it is. Um, I said at the start of the season with you, Logie, that Warren Point would go down, and I still believe that because um, they are facing that difficult second season syndrome. Ballon Mallard got through it last time, and um, although Ballon Mallard have had their struggles, I think Warren Point will eventually go down. I think going to Institute and um, playing them on their home turf is very, very tough, no matter who you are, because it's a long journey, and um, Institute have got... Uh, um, a tight compact side there and um, they give nobody an easy game on their own patch that's why I think Institute will survive and Warren Point unfortunately will go down even though I have a lot of time for the, their, their manager Barry Gray and the way they play football as well I have to agree with that I think the way they play football is very very good very entertaining it just shows you that the Irish League the standard I'm working week in week out with BBC as well too I get to the games some of the quality of the goals that are scored as well uh, are fantastic, Stevie. Yeah, we shouldn't forget that, Logie. And remember, these guys are part-timers as well, so they're not training week in, week out. They're, they're training maybe two nights a week, you know, um, whereas professionals get to train day in, day out. So um, we should... Um, we should sort of celebrate the fact that the Irish League is having a great season because there's been enough times whenever we've um, criticised it, Logie, for its antics on and off the pitch. But this season, I think, uh, is one of the best in living memory. And um, I think we're in for uh, a rip-roaring finish. Um, ultimately, I think the title race will come down to three teams. Cliftonville, Linfield and Portadown. But um, I would love Glenavon and Crusaders to stay up there as long as possible and prove me wrong. Now, you mentioned that your top three, you know, Cliftonville in, in recent weeks, you know, ahead of the holiday period, they've begun to turn the corner away, but, you know, players are beginning to find their goal scoring touch. You know, McDay's getting a touch here, Gormley's getting a goal there. It's almost a, it's almost like a mirror image of, a, of last season where they started poorly enough and then they came good. It is, you know, um, I think sometimes when you, when you become a champion, it's hard to... Um, get round that fact. 
Cliftonville became double champions. They won titles back to back. Um, and for players who have been playing their hearts out for years and not really going anywhere, maybe finishing third or fourth, but not really challenging, then they became double champions. So they're now trying to get that into their heads over the summer. They come back and um, it's very hard for them to lift themselves again. They've also lost their best player, Liam Boyce, by the way, mm -hmm. who's gone to Scottish football. So um, they've all that going on in their mind. And you have to get motivated again, Logie. And it's been interesting to me watching Cliff and Villa's season. They have been motivated by the big games. When the big games have come along, they have shown up. The last few weeks, they've won at Crusaders and they've won at Linfield. That tells you a story about Cliftonville, how good they are. Cliftonville will now look to motor on and um, uh, get ahead of Linfield and pour it down in the title race before Christmas because um, I have a funny feeling that in January, Linfield and Port Down will go into the, the market and bring in new players. Certainly, Linfield will, and um, it'll be Warren Feeney's job and his his ambition to try and stay with Cliftonville up until the January transfer window because I don't think Cliftonville will bring in too many but watch Linfield, they're going to bring in two or three at least. And I suppose that Warren maybe uh, with his knowledge of uh, the, the smaller leagues or you know the, the in England he you wouldn't know who he, he could bring to Windsor Park you know because he's done very well and this is opening gambit as a player manager at Linfield where the pressure was always on. Linfield fans expect to win five and every week and everybody hates Linfield because of Linfield are who they are. I think he's done well, Warren Fino. I think Fino has. He's done a really good job so far. Um, what he has to do now is build on it. <laughs> and of course, yes. that's the big factor with Linfield Football Club because um, although this is his first season, you can bet your bottom dollar, most of the fans at Windsor Park who turn up um, will be expecting Linfield to win the title this season. Won't be as easy as that. Um, but I think Fina will bring in a few players and it wouldn't surprise me if a few are well-known faces. In England, there are so many players, Logie, who aren't even playing for football clubs at the moment. They're all out of contract. And, um, you know, uh, surely it would be better for them even to be playing in a part-time league than not playing at all and um, earning a few quid. So um, come January, expect to see a few faces that um, you may have heard of. They may have played for Northern Ireland before or they may just have played in the lower leagues in England. But Fino is not just um, a, a good manager in the making. He's also a really good guy. And um, he's a very popular bloke over in English football circles and Scottish football circles. So he certainly has the contacts. And um, it'll be really interesting to see who he brings in in January. I love the glint in your eye because you clearly know these names. You're not willing to tell us who they might be, these fellas that might come in in January. Well, I can't tell you because <laughs> I don't know what Fina would do to me. <laughs> I hate all that, you know. Oh, I know, but I can't tell you, etc. Like now, you talk about Warren Feeney, the new boy, and then we, we talked about a fellow who'd been there. He he was there whenever the Brickies came into Shamrock Park, Ronnie McFall, and Porter Down, you know, they're, they're, they're back up there, they're, they're battling again. I saw them against Warren Point. Disappointed, actually, against Warren Point. There was a big gap I felt between the, the middle of the park and the defence, allowed Warren Point to cut through. Ronnie's going to have to tighten it up a wee bit, you know, and uh, he, as you say, might look for the transfer market in January. Well, that's surprising what you say, Logie, about that match, because when you think about the Porter Down midfield, they've brought in Michael Galt, mm -hmm. they've also Robbie Gard, two very experienced players who know the game inside out. Um, so whenever you're saying that they looked a bit disorganised, I'm sure Ronnie McFall will look into that himself because he's, he's a type of guy who leaves no stone unturned. I think for me the best story would be if Porter Down won the title this season. Because at the end of last season, Ronnie McFall was under pressure, as he always seems to be at Portadown for whatever reason, and he was given a two-year contract. I will say right here and right now, Logie, that after those two years are up, Ronnie McFall will walk away. And in that time, I would love to see him win another league title because he has been magnificent for the Irish League. He's been an absolutely incredible servant for Portadown Football Club. He's had more fallouts with more people <laughs> in the game than I know. I've had... The wrong end of his tongue on a few occasions, I'm sure you have as well. There'll be other people watching this who um, have suffered the same fate. But you know what? You see the th one thing about Ronnie, which I've always admired. He could be biting at you one minute, but you see the next day, it's done and dusted and we all move on. And um, Ronnie McFall is a brilliant football man. He also tries to play football the right way. And I would love to see Portadown win it, just for him. Right, that's your heart uh, for Portadown, but uh, your head, who's going to win the Irish League? Well, I did say Linfield at the start of the season, Logie, and um, uh, having watched most of the games now, um, I have to say that Cliftonville, to me, looked the strongest. Um, what happens in January will tell the tale. If Warren Feeney can get the players that he wants into the football club, I think it's going to go right to the wire. But if he doesn't get them in, I think Cliftonville are going to win it by maybe four or five points because they've been there and done it. 
you know, they've got the experience as well. And in Tommy Breslin, they've got one of the canniest managers around. I would love to see it go right to the final week where you have Cliftonville, Linfield, Portadown, even Glenavon and Crusaders involved, you know, because um, I think the Irish League has started so well. Wouldn't mm -hmm. it be brilliant if it finished in style too?